on. Welcome to today's group training, guys. Today we're going over reverse pyramid training. This is a style of lifting that is a super simple way for us to hit PRs frequently, get stronger, build more muscle, and prevent injury. And uh, we're going to be going in depth on what reverse pyramid training is, how can we implement it, why do we implement it, what is the purpose, and what are we going to use it for. So this is this is the uh, like this like graphic visualization PDF that you guys can review before you do your reverse pyramid training set, just to you know refresh your memory to get an idea. But we'll we'll, we'll go back over this and go over this again in detail. But I want to uh, first go over this uh, reverse pyramid training worksheet. What is reverse pyramid training and how it works? So there's a normal pyramid, guys. A normal pyramid training was the most common style of training is when someone is when you um, add a little and you add some when you do some exercises you're doing let's say the bench press and then you add a little bit of weight rest then you add a little bit of weight rest you keep adding weight adding weight until you hit your pr and that's you know okay but in my opinion it's we're going to be losing our energy much faster doing regular pyramid training we'll be able to hit prs much frequently if we can get to our pr set earlier in the set of the pyramid because most, most people train like this, and it's not a super bad way to train, but in my opinion, it's, it's slowing progress down. Um, I feel like a lot of people are scared to go heavy in the beginning because they're worried about getting injured, and we're going to talk all about that, how we're going to prevent that. So, again, regular pyramid, guys, is when you add some weight, do, do the reps, weight, rest, then add a little bit of weight, and you keep building up until you hit your PR, and you are depleting your energy and your stamina and your central nervous system fatigue is going down every time you hit hit that set so every time you're trying to add more weight you've already done you've already depleted your energy so what reverse pyramid training is quite the opposite of that so you start with your heaviest set very first after the warm-up this is important after after a, a pretty extensive warm-up Okay, we're not going to just go right into our heaviest set the first thing that we do in our workout. We're going to do a pretty extensive warm-up before getting into that heavy set. Um, but again, we're just I'm saying the first working set. We have the warm-up sets, and then we have our working sets. Now we're, that we're moving on from uh, beginner to more intermediate style training, um, we, are, we, are, we have working sets and warm-up sets. And that's how we start reverse pyramid training. So start with your heaviest set first. Then you're going to decrease the weight and increase the reps with each set. Okay. And we're going to, you know, I, this is very simple. I could just end it right there. It's very simple. Just that one sentence. You start with your heaviest first, then you decrease the weight and increase the reps with each set. Okay. That's basically all it is, but I want to get in a little bit more depth, a little bit more detail. So we're clear. So why use reverse pyramid training and build strength and lift the heaviest weights when we are at our freshest, when we are at our freshest, our cleanest, our, most optimal performance state we're going to be able to perform if we to really change like athletic athletic ability and our muscular um structure and just us becoming better if we can perform at a higher intensity when our performance is at its highest energy that moment in time right there when we hit our first set when we're going to be fully energized and be fully warmed up we are going to get the most amount of benefits right there if we if we Compared to a pyramid training, when we're trying to hit a PR over time and losing our freshness, we're losing our energy and depleting it over time, it's going to be harder to really hit these to maximize our strength gain. So it builds strength. It lifting heavy first, you know, doing the hard shit first when we are fresh is really going to help optimize our performance and us hit more frequent PRs. And that's the next thing. Hit PRs. Maximize potential to hit personal records. You guys, when I really started getting into reverse pyramid training, um, I started hitting PRs like crazy because after my warm up, I'd get right into my first heavy set and I would just look back at what I did last week. Okay, I did 75 for eight last week. I'm gonna try to go for um, another rep or I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so it's, I'm gonna try to go for whatever it is. See, now that we're doing reverse pyramid training, all you guys need to focus on is that first set that you did last week because the subsequent sets the subsequent sets are for building muscle or for more hypertrophy and blood flow. That first set, as long as we track that, remember each time that we hit our lift, we'll be able to try to outperform ourselves and know where we need to be 
and if our strength if we're, if our strength is getting better and if our strength is getting worse when you do a regular pyramid there's so many other variables because you're building up to that set where like you don't know maybe you are stronger maybe you're not it's hard to tell with reverse pyramid training it's very easy to tell if we're getting stronger or if we're staying stagnant or if we're getting weaker okay so it's going to maximize our potential to hit personal records it's going to build more muscle guys that's what we all want right effective for muscle growth in key areas i'm only going to be doing reverse pyramid training for it's only for a couple lifts really it's only for the compound upper body lifts like bench press and pull-ups and we're going to get into that so it also prevents injury guys now this might sound crazy a little nuanced but you know when you do regular pyramid and you build up to a heavier set as you fatigue yourself you are putting yourself at risk at risk of energy because you are getting weaker and less um, and more prone to injury as you deplete your stamina, as you uh, get fatigued. And if we can hit our most intense, heaviest set up front um, and then deplete after we use a lot of that energy, we're putting ourselves up at a better spot to prevent injury. Um, and also, the warm up, uh, the, the warm up is extensive, guys. I know a lot of you guys who are getting into reverse pyramid training, you might see four sets or five sets instead of your regular three sets. Those extra sets are the warm up sets. I want you guys to be doing, you guys should be doing up to three, maybe even four warm up sets, whatever you feel comfortable with, but just don't fatigue yourself in that warm up set. You could do, say you're doing bench press and your PR is 135 for w whatever it is. Um, you could just do like, you know, just the bar for like 25 reps, rest, do it again, and then maybe add like a 10 pound weight and do it for like another 20 reps. You want to get a mini pump, you want to get a lot of blood flow into the area that we're about to hit before getting into that first heavy set. That's how we're really going to prevent injury because we are going to hurt ourselves if we get right into that first heavy set without being fully warmed up. Does that make sense, guys? So it, it, I, I want you guys to be very cautious about this now that we're leaving the beginner stage is that we need to be very warmed up when we're getting into our first heavy set. So, and yes, please. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to keep on sounding like a broken record here. We need to be very warmed up before getting into that hard set because if, because then reverse pyramid training isn't good for injury because we need that lubrication. We need that blood flow. We need that lactic acid going throughout the muscles before getting into that very intense heavy set or our joints are going to be stiff it's going to be hard we're going to be risked for injury so again at least i would like you guys to at least do at least two warm-up sets before getting into a hard set and a, and, a, and a potential pr okay that makes sense um and once you start getting more advanced you might not need as much warm-ups because we are doing daily mobility we are doing stretches we're doing cardio so I usually just do one warm-up set, but it's a massive warm-up set. It could be like 30 to 40 reps, just getting a, just, just just going all out and just burning myself out. You know, burning yourself out with a lot of reps, a lot of volume at very light weight isn't going to fatigue you like low repetitions with very high weight. All right. So implementing our RPT warm-up, prepare your muscles and joints. Thoroughly, just like I said, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat this to death because preventing injury is my number one priority as your coach. Yeah, building muscle, all that shit's dope, all that's fine and dandy, but like I don't want anybody getting hurt because I've been hurt, and like when you do get hurt, you're gonna lose a ton of progress. You're not gonna be able to work out how you were were doing, and uh, it it fucks up our whole shit. Trust me, I've been hurt, very hurt, a lot of time. Not, I mean, two intense times i've been very hurt and i've lost a lot of muscle i lost a lot of strength and um it wasn't be it, it was because of other reasons but i'm just saying that you don't want to hurt yourself so we need to do everything to prevent injury with that with that initial warm-up and not get too excited just getting right into it okay heaviest set first you want us we're going to be lowering the repetitions i know when you guys a lot of you guys started we're doing like 10 12 15 reps not for our hard set our hard set more to around four to six i know this says four to six but i like to say a little bit five to eight five to eight four to six anything more than eight is out of the hard set and we're going into the second set um back here and that and that's to failure guys so that means so think about it if you're doing if you're doing you know 12 reps for 75 pounds imagine how much you could do for five five to eight reps you could probably do more like 80 to 85 pounds you could so we're going to be lifting heavier 
with less repetitions on that first heavy set. And that last rep needs to be hard to do. A lot of you guys don't have spotters, like be safe. If you, you don't want to push yourself on that last rep where you know it's, it's a little bit sketchy. You can listen to your body. You know how strong you are during mid set. If it seems too scary, just drop the weight. Preventing injury is number one. And what, you, what else you could do is if like, you know, you're doing a bench press, for example, and you're like, I can't get that up. You could just try for a partial or try to just hold it there at that bottom end range of motion. And that's also going to prime us up, set us up for next time that we try to hit a PR. I hope you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. I know I'm talking a lot, talking fast. Um, heaviest set, start with four to six reps, five to eight reps, around in that. I'd say, yeah, any, anything less than four, that's too heavy. Anything more than eight, that's too light. And then any time that we surpass eight reps, I like to say, that's when we are going to are gonna switch up our hard set, either change the variation, either add more weight, or we're going to find a way to keep hitting PRs, okay? You guys have any questions about this so far? Anybody watching on the live have any questions about anything that I've said so far? Is all this making sense? Okay. Heavy set first. Then we decrease the weight, increase the reps. Set two, six to eight. 90% working weight. Set three, eight to 10, 80% working weight. But that, but that doesn't mean we're still trained to close to failure on those last few reps. And um, so that says six to eight, eight to 10. Um, this is a little bit more repetition. So it, it's, it's, it's up to you. When it, after the hard set, it doesn't really matter too much. But I just like more repetitions. Um, more blood flow, you get a better pump because it, it, it's ultimately up to you. If you want to, if you want to keep where you want to keep the rep ranges, I like them a little bit higher after the hard, hard set. So after uh, four to eight reps, I would go into 10 to 12. Then after 10 to 12, I'd go into 12 to 15. All right. Boom, boom. So this just gets into a bench press example. And when it says a hundred percent, that's like your maximal effort, you know, but and for that amount of rep, for that rep range. And when it says 90%, you know, that's, that's 90% of your effort for that amount of rep range. But at that last rep, still, we're, we're pushing ourselves basically towards failure. You know, every set we're trying to train until we break form, you know, until we are, our form breaks a little bit. All right. So here's just examples with bench press and pull-ups. Um, some of you guys who are doing weighted pull-ups, you know, this is reverse pull <laughs> training is going to be huge for weighted pull-ups. Um, as we add weight, use body weight, and, and, and vice versa. Uh, lower body, we do not do reverse pyramid training, okay? Because of risk of injury, it's just a little bit different how I just wouldn't rec I just don't recommend re reverse pyramid training for the lower body. We want to do regular pyramid because our legs are just a huge, massive, vulnerable muscles that uh, we want to build up towards heavier weight with the legs. It's just safer. That, that's, that's the only reason. There's, it's, you know, we could probably get hit more frequently PRs and get better hypertrophy doing reverse pyramid training for our lower body, but I just don't think it's as safe. I think it just puts us at risk because reverse pyramid training is, um, I don't want to say scary, but it is a little bit intense compared to regular pyramid training because you are going to be hitting PRs frequently. If we start hitting PRs frequently on squats and stuff, like it's, it's putting a lot of stress on your central nervous system. So there's just a lot of reasons why I don't recommend reverse pyramid training for the lower body. And then we're going to get into isolations. You know, isolations like uh, calf raises, curls, this is not reverse pyramid training. We're going for higher reps and more time under tension. Time under tension. How long is the muscle under tension? When it comes to like curls, lateral raises, calf raises, any things that any, any type of movement where it's, it's, it's a singular muscle group or just maybe one or two muscle groups, we're trying to go more repetitions at a lighter weight and very slow reps for more time under tension to, to utilize more muscle fibers. Okay, let me know if that makes sense. And everybody should have got both of these worksheets so you can review for yourself. Um, key points, upper body we use up reverse pyramid training for strength and muscle growth, but upper body, only upper body compound movements, rows, bench press, if some of you on weighted pull-ups, pull-ups, I mean weighted push-ups, pull-ups, any compound upper body movement, if you guys aren't sure, 
usually on your program when you're doing your lift, lift it will say RPT instead of the usual uh, reps ranges that I had for you. All right, tips for success, track your progress, weights and reps. Like this is gonna make it a lot easier for us to track that little thing, you know, when I do the check-ins, guys. Um, I don't know if I can bring it up right now. But you guys know what I'm talking about. Well, I'm like, what are your hard sets um, for this and that? This is what I'm talking about. A lot of you guys are unsure on that for the longest time. Well, now we know I want us to get super hyper-focused on our first working hard set. That's the set we track. The other sets do matter, but as, as long as we're improving on our hard set, set, the other sets will improve too because we're only going to decrease um, from our hard set onto the subsequent sets. Does that make sense? So we don't necessarily gotta be super focused in tracking the, the sets after the hard set. We're just gonna be following the reverse pyramid training scheme. So every time that we hit a PR, we will know how much we need to decrease, about 10% for that second set, another 10% for the third set, and if we do four sets, we do another 10%. And every 10% of intensity that we drop, we also are going to increase the reps by one or two, okay? All right, I know I'm talking a lot, but if you guys have any questions, please hit me up. So. Uh, trust me, this might seem a little confusing at first, but it's going to get easier to track our progress, especially with the check-ins and knowing how stronger and knowing that we're on the right track and knowing how much stronger we're getting with these specific lifts. And um, I'm sure you guys will notice up front, the first couple months or first couple weeks of us doing reverse pyramid training, you're going to be hitting a lot of PRs all the time because you're, you've never felt this strong because you've always fatigued yourself getting up to that more intense set. All right. I, I, like, I love talking about this. This is, reverse pyramid training really is awesome. So to make it easier for to track our progress, I want you guys to stay focused on that first hard set, track it, know it, put it on your phone, on your notes, screenshot it, whatever you need to do to remember what your hard set was on these upper body compound movements. This is the, really the first step to get us to get even uh, deeper into our training and um, the whole philosophies of how this all works in us to keep progressing. Okay, the, the best way to progressively overload on, on, the, on the exercises that are really the best exercises. You know, the pull-ups, the, the, the chest exercises, the back exercises, some, like the chest, really the chest and the big back exercise, the big compound exercises. I, in my opinion, they are the most important, they're the most fun, the badass exercises. I mean, I know lower body exercises are amazing too, but I'm just saying like the, the upper body, like the bench press and the pull-ups and the rows and the pull-downs, like those, those, you know, those are fun. Those are fun. Come on, guys. And now that they're going to be so much more fun because we're going to be able to, we're going to be getting stronger at them. We're going to be able to track our progress on these specific exercises in a, in a, in a way that's an easy and simplified. Okay. Stay consistent, regular practice for the best results. You guys know we're, we're, we're consistency squad up in this, up in this bitch. Uh, listen to your body. Rest if you feel pain or discomfort. Of course, like I, as the first couple of weeks of us doing reverse pyramid training, I'm gonna be checking in with you guys frequently to make sure that you know everything's okay, nothing just feels weird. Like this is your, this is a different style of training for your body that it may need to get used to. And I don't want you guys to super jump into this like you know hardcore. Like, I'm just going all out. Like ease into the reverse pyramid training and really do multiple warm ups. And you don't have to go heavier than you ever have before right up front. You can just one week just be like, all right, I'm going to try doing this. And then, you know, we don't have to take large jumps. You know, it's very incremental. And again, as you first are doing one of your first reverse pyramid training sets, don't go for a PR right away. Just see how it feels at these lower rep ranges. Okay. Is this making sense? Any questions, any comments, any concerns? All right. Why reverse pyramid training? is the best for upper body it prevents injury by starting with the heaviest set first your muscles are freshest and the least fatigue which reduces risk of injury as the weight decreases each subsequent set the likelihood of injury remains low builds muscle the initial heavy set stimulates muscle fibers effectively and the following sets with lighter weights and higher reps promote muscle hypertrophy hypertrophy is really is really the um the science of, of building muscle density on your body, okay? And it helps you hit more frequent PRs. This is the real reason why I think reverse pyramid training is, is, the, is the best. Hit frequent PRs quickly. Starting heavy allows you to maximize your strength potential and hit personal records, 
when you have ha, when you ha, when you have the most energy leading to quicker strength gains. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Get into this, guys. This might I don't know I don't know if this is aesthetically pleasing for your eyes. I mean I've been doing more of these. Like is it just they're just easy to make. But I, I, I like doing these because it's like a visual, like, okay, like it's like, a, it's like an upside down pyramid. Like I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so uh, this is just something that you guys can look at, but this is what I use. Like I, I have a screenshot on my phone sometimes when I'm about to hit my upper body lift. A quick review, just look at this and absorb some of the knowledge that's in here and then just get into my lift with that mindset. Um, so I'm just gonna get into this real quick. Set one, 12 to 20 reps, warm up, with that warm up, high volume, low intensity, lightweight, high reps, get the muscle burning, get it warm. And you can do more than one warm up set. You can do three, you can do four. I don't care, you can do five. Eventually you're gonna fatigue. But I do want you, I do want you, that is the most important thing on this reverse pyramid training, is the warm up set and the first set. Those are the most important things. And that's what I want you to be mindful of, is that your body needs to be warm, you need to be primed, you need to be prepped, and you need to be get yourself ready for that intense set, okay? Set two, which really should I really should switch this up and call this set one and they'll call this the warm up. But set two, the hard set. This is going to be the most intense set. We want to make sure we are fully warmed up and also at our strongest. Track this set. This is the set that I want you to figure out how to track effectively. What I do is I put it in my notes pad every right after I hit it. I put it on my notes pad and I screenshot it. I have it at a certain spot in my camera roll on my phone, and that's how I track. Uh, and I look back every time I'm about to hit that exercise again, I look what I did last week, but you guys don't have to do that. If you fill it out on the check-in and you put it into your workouts, we will have it tracked automatically. All right. And then, uh, the second set or the second to the hardest set, um, and again, guys, you're going to be resting a lot longer, a little bit longer. I mean, some of you are resting two minutes some of you are resting three minutes. When it comes to these intent, as we get stronger and we lift heavier weights, once you guys get close to like these really heavier weights, like. If you're benching close to 200, if you're doing pull-ups with 60 pounds, once you get into like that type of intensity, we're going to be resting closer to three to four minutes because we need to we need to give our central nervous system time to regain um, its re regain its energy, re recharge. Okay, we the goal is to come back stronger on the next set, even though the first set was the most intense weight rise, uh, uh, most intense. And, and the aspect that it's the heaviest weight and we're doing the lowest amount of reps. The other sets are still intense. We're just reducing the weight by about 10% and we're increasing the weight reps by at least two or one or two. But I wanted to briefly say that, that you guys wanna be resting at least two minutes, at least, that's bare minimum, okay? I rest, when, it, when it's compound movement, it's always like three minutes or more. Like I, I'll take a breather, like whatever like it's it's okay to take a longer rest maybe do something like check in on the app log a meal that you missed it's okay to rest especially i'm just i'm just talking about these specific moves the bench the heavier rows the pull-ups the compound upper body movements where we're where we're doing when we're training much harder we can rest much longer okay not like power lift like anything more than five minutes like okay like you know go turn on netflix but uh so after the hard set, then the second set, second set is 10 to 12 reps. And uh, we're going to be reducing the intensity and weight, add more reps, reduce the weight. Now we are training for more hypertrophy. So again, warm up 12 to 10, 12 to 20 reps, hard set, four to eight reps, set two, 10 to 12 reps. And then the last set, um, unless we do, depends on how many sets you're doing, the last set, um, 12 to 15 reps. Um, that the last set is going to be the lightest weight with the most amount of reps. I know I'm probably sounding like a broken record. A lot of you guys watching the replay or you watching live, uh, probably getting pissed. I'm saying a lot of the same things over and over again, but, uh, I wanted to make this clear that this is very simple, but I'm here to, I'm here to explain it to death. So that last set, high reps, lower weight, train for the pump on this set. Once your last set is just going for the pump, like go much lighter and just bust them out and like, ah. I'm not pretending to do curls, but like the bench press, like you're getting that pump on that last set, okay? When you break form, that's when it ends. See, there's a lot of little bubbles around here that will give you like little, 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 uh, you know, little tips and tricks. When you break form, that's when the set ends, okay? 
I mean, unless you're on that very last set, you can do a couple cheat reps. Um, if, I mean, not like maybe not bench press, but when it comes to pull-ups, you can maybe swing a little bit. If you're just trying to get a little bit more, one more extra rep, I mean, as long as it's, you know, not a dangerous uh, fake rep, cheat rep. All right, and there's another little mini triangle right here. Hard set, after the warm-up sets, of course, and then the next set, reduce 5 or 10% from the, from the first set. I would say closer to 10%. But uh, we will find out, you know, everybody's strength um, levels as we do this for a while. And then the other set, reduce the weight again 5 Then the, the, the next subsequent set, reduce the weight again another 5 to 10% from the second set. Okay? And what does it say over here? Reverse pyramid training. Training style that is the first set of an exercise after the warm-up is performed with the heaviest weight or the highest intensity. Each set after the hard set is performed with a lighter weight and higher reps, less intensity, longer time under tension. Typically, each subsequent set is 7% to 11% lighter, less intense than the previous set. All right, I think I beat this to death. I, I mean, I think we, get, we got this clear. Do, do any, do you, we got this. Does any people got, we got it? If you guys have any questions, um, you can comment below this video. If you're watching live, you can hit the chat if you have any questions. I hope you got value from this training. I hope this made sense. Um, I'm super excited to roll out the reverse pyramid training for a lot of you guys who have been in the program probably about three months-ish. That's the time after we've mastered our form, we've mastered volume, we've mastered consistency. Now we've mastered the habits. Now it's time to work on the quality of the habits. We're really going to you know, become scientists in the gym now which I'm really excited about. So hope you guys got value from this reverse pyramid training training. And uh, again, I'm, I'm here to get you guys in the best shape of your life and try to simplify to the best of my abilities. But in reality, it is, this is a numbers game and we all don't really like math. And it, this, is, this can be complicated, but I'm doing my best to try to simplify it for you, keep you guys consistent, keep you guys motivated. So hope you guys got value from this training and I'll see you guys in next week's training. Let's have a great night. Peace. Let's go.